Hey, good morning. This is Eric from Exit Games. Um, so I'm going to record here a video that I hope will help explain the whole thing about uh, ticks, infusion, client-side prediction, how this relates to um, uh, rigid bodies and physics, or maybe even character controllers and whatever you use. So I'll, um, actually, I'm planning to shoot a few videos, not only one, because I, I want to be able to explain several different concepts over the same idea. So um, let's start here. So um, let's assume um, time goes from left to right. And I'm going to be starting simple here with uh, what happens on a server. And then we're going to move on to see what happens on a client. And when you, we do client set prediction and, and what is the relation between the simulation ticks and the interpolation and so on and so on. So let's start doing this. So, so as I said, so time moves from left to right. And because Fusion is a tick-based system, um, things are simulated in discrete steps that we call ticks. So um, let's assume um, so, and, and the important thing is that on the server, things move always forward. There is no re-simulation concept on the server at all. So, server never rolls back, it only moves forward. So, um, but server it still needs to interpolate. It's, I mean, technically, it only needs to interpolate if it's uh, what we call a host, which is a server that also has a player because this guy is playing the game and he wants to see it. There is a render, um, a rendering window attached to it. But that said, server also interpolates. But let's explain how. So um, because the simulation happens in discrete steps, basically, the server is so it is simulating forward. So say we have a certain tick here. Let's call this the data about tick 100. And then the server is going to simulate forward and is going to move um, and is going to have the data about tick 101. So how, how does this actually work? So Fusion computes time based on the time that passed on the server uh, machine. And if enough time has passed, he's going to decide to simulate a new tick. So, so if we think about um, this little guy here as our character, what, does Fusion, what Fusion does is, so we had it here. And when tick 100 was simulated, let's also assume that this is our transform position on the x-axis, although we're also saying that this is time passing. But let's say the the delta movement from tick 99 that we had before to tick 100 moves this guy here. So the server has this data here. So say now the server simulates forward one more time to tick 101. So it now has two copies of this character, actually one on 100 and, and, and another one as 101. This is what we call, um, so, so survey is only moving forward, but we still call this, although the predicted tick, or let's call it the state. So this is the latest version of the game state that we have. And this is the one that's actually going to be sent to clients if, if there is a network step after this, because this all happens between inside the unit update. But because it still keeps the copy of this guy here for a few different reasons. So we call this state previous. So we have state and state previous. So the server might need to keep a, a longer buffer of this because if you're using delta snapshots, it may be transferring, uh, comparing to a delta that's a bit older because that particular client needs to have it compared to that one. But that's another story that's irrelevant for what we're talking about here. But it, it has at least these two states because if this guy is a host and he needs to render, that's the important part. Um, the rendering here could be happening much faster. So for example, when, when we computed this guy, I'm, I'm going to ignore the renderings that happened before, between, uh, before we actually simulated tick 101. Let's talk about what happens on the rendering that happens after we finish simulating tick 101. What happens is that technically, the render calls are not aligned to these ticks. 
So let's assume that this here means 16.667 milliseconds have passed for us to actually simulate this. But maybe the rendering is running faster or is lower, it doesn't matter. There is also a remainder clock here. So let's say we have something like 5 milliseconds extra, extra here. So technically, we do not want to show this position here because this position is not aligned to the render because maybe and, and also maybe you're running on a such a faster monitor as a host that you may have renderings happening here all before you have time to simulate what will be the next stick at some point. So that's why we need to interpolate. So what you actually see visually if if we have a render right here render. It, it accumulated 5 milliseconds past the time for the simulation that was necessary for us to simulate a new tick 101. So what we'll render is actually, so the alpha here is going to be, so alpha, so this is what we call state alpha. This is going to be whatever is the remainder of the clock, 5 milliseconds, divided by our delta, which is 16 points um, 667 milliseconds. Technically, you can do that actually by computing this in seconds and multiplying by update rate. That's a more accurate operation than this, but it's, it's mathematically is the same. So this is going to give us an alpha of between 0 and 1, a normalized alpha. And it's going to be somewhere in th a little bit before third here. It's going to be something like 0 0.28 or so. I didn't, I didn't do the count. So, so where is actually the position of the rendered target. And that's why you should have a separate game object to represent the rendering, because on the host, we never modify. The, the, the position of the transform itself is going to be this, because we have to keep it like this to be able to perform the next simulation forward. And we don't mess around with the transform on the server, because the server treats the Unity transform as read-only data. So let me, let me clarify something here. So technically, on the server, the, trans the Unity transform is kept like this. We have a copy of this guy here as a, as a buffer just for delta snapshots and, and rendering buffer. And let's say we also have this multiple copies here. And what we'll render, let's use a different color. So what we'll render is going to be somewhere like, oops, these are magnets. So let me be careful here. Oh, damn. I'm trying to use a position where they do not actually, yeah, this is going to repel. Okay. So it's going to render somewhere in here. And that's what actually you're going to see. So say then on the next Unity update, we're running on a faster monitor. So this is what you're actually seeing on the server. Although your simulation data from fixed update network is, was here, what visually you see on the interpolation target is this. So say there is another uh, simulation step, uh, another Unity update, and the accumulated delta makes bare almost enough to simulate a new tick, but not yet enough. So there will be another render call here. There will be no new call to fixed update network, because we don't have yet enough time to call a new fixed update network here. But there will be a new render call, where we're going to see this green guy here. It's going to be so the, the alpha, the interpolation alpha, is going to be very close to 1. And basically, we're going to be moving very, very, very close to this blue guy here. And what we're going to see is this position here, which is very close to this. Because your render target, your render time is here. So if you want to do what we call extrapolation, you have to do it manually. Because extrapolation means you need to have custom code on render to actually, besides the last fixed update network, which is the position you are here, you wanted to position the guy here instead. That's extrapolation that you have to do. And you should never do with the actual data of the network transform or, net or whatever is your network data that you keep here, because this is immaculate. This should be the network buffer. This is never reset on a server. So what you could do is you could extrapolate the visuals on the render here. You could, you could even use physics logic on a character controller to extrapolate if you're using something like our character controller or KCC from the asset store. But 
do not do with the actual data because it will be here. So then let's say on the next render, the call is gonna happen right here on time. So then yes, finally we have enough time to simulate a new fixed update network. And we're gonna still have our buffers here for, for, the, for the state data, for data snapshots if necessary, and at least the previous one for the interpolation here because our render is gonna again be a bit closer to the first one on the interpolation target. So this is it for the server, okay? So on the next video, we're going to understand what happens on a client because that's a bit more complicated because the client does rollbacks and all the, those things. So I'll show what happens on a client next. And um, but I'm going to shoot on the, I'm going to do it on a different video because I want to have these as as um, separate ones that can be <laughs> watched uh, in separately, okay? So, see you soon.